Is fascism alive and well? Well, it might be at your homeowners association to talk to us about it from, well, Channel 9 News for so many years. Ward and Lucas, so great to see you again. Thank you very much. Good to see you, John. You know, uh, neighbors at war. I mean, you, all right, I've, I've, I've heard people having horror stories with H HOAs. Yours was so interesting, you decided to to write the book, Neighbors at War. Why? Mine got me motivated simply because I, in my situation, I get into a little bit in the book. I have a couple of non -dis uh, full disclosure chapters so people know where I'm coming from. But in my situation, I started looking around the country to see if anybody else was suffering the way I was with going through what I was. And I discovered it's far worse than anybody suspects. When you say it's worse, tell me, what, what do you mean it? When you join a homeowners association, you're essentially joining a corporation. Now, when you walk into a corporation, when you walk into Channel 9, you don't necessarily have free speech rights. You don't have gun rights. You don't have um, um, a lot of the rights that you uh, think you might have it's in the Constitution. It's a private place. It's a private. It's private. It's their company. They can run that company any way they right. want. Right. A home is different. A home is your castle. A home is where you go home to be alone and to be left alone. It's uh, um, constitutionally protected. Um, in, in uh, several amendments, you have freedoms in your home that you don't have when you step outdoors. When you're in a homeowners association, you suddenly come to realize at some point you have no First Amendment rights, no Second Amendment rights. How do, third, how do you fourth, mean? Give me, give, give, me, give me some examples. Give me a, an amendment to talk about. Second Amendment. Let's your talk favorite. Second Amendment. Okay. Texas. A gentleman um, lost his home because he was selling guns. Which is perfectly legal. It is legal, but uh, the HOA came up with a rule that um, uh, you can do no, you can have no private business operating out of a home. Everybody has private businesses. Of course they do. Homes. Of course they do. It's what, what we do in our homes. We write books. That's a private business. This man never brought a gun into the HOA or through the house. He sold guns over the internet. He never. Whoa, 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 whoa. He sold guns, and Over, the guns never even went through never, his house. No ammo, no guns wow. ever went through his house. He never put his finger on a gun. But the HOA filed a fine against him and a lien and took his house. Because they didn't like the type because of business. Because somebody yet. got on the board that didn't like the fact that he was even remotely connected to the gun business. Talk to me about the First Amendment. Uh, well, you've got several various <laughs> ways. You've got the uh, Twin Rivers decision in New Jersey where somebody put up a political sign outside their house. And like we all do during political season. Yes, but in HOAs, uh, you cannot necessarily do that. If your HOA says no political signs, you're in a corporation now. It's not private property. It's uh, property that's owned by a partnership. Every member of the, of, of the neighborhood is your partner. Even though you may never have met him, he's your financial so in other partner. Words, you're bound to him financially. So your neighborhood is the corporation, and you're really just a share Holder. You own your share, which is called your house, right. but you can be outvoted by the other stockholders of this company. You can be outvoted. Is, is that a bad analogy? Uh, no, it's not a bad analogy at all. You can be outvoted by uh, two people on a three member board in a community of 500 people if the other uh, several hundred people don't show up to vote. Um, that which most people don't because nobody's involved don't. in this. They're not who involved. wants to be on an HOA board? Only Nobody. people only people who have control issues. Exactly. Okay. And that's the problem is the HOA system was built to uh, uh, attract just this kind of person, the person with power issues. And uh, when somebody finds himself on a board for a number of years, um, uh, well, come on. Uh, they become a Robert Moses. Uh, yeah. Absolute. Power, power corrupts, corrupts, corrupts absolutely. absolutely. Yes. Talk to me about. Yeah, you know, there's another amendment. You, you can't take my property without due process. Right. There are no due process rights in an HOA. There are no do, due process rights at Channel Nine, or Channel Four, or Channel Seven. Well, there shouldn't be no due process rights at Channel Four or at any private business. But this is well, my there more, home. There are more due process rights in a corporation uh, like uh, Channel Nine or Channel Seven than there are in a homeowners association. Really? They. Uh, grant and take away rights at will. They get away with it because they've got the two-member majority on the three-person board. Talk to me a little bit about your fight. I mean, because you you wouldn't have have written a book, Neighbors at War, if you weren't personally affected by it. Right, this. What and, was it? and I don't want to get into mine. Okay, uh, if you don't mind, because the the story is so much bigger than uh, than what went on with me. You're talking about homeowners associations that are discovering themselves in uh, massive, massive liability lawsuits. On the losing end, where you may be paying 150 a month for your condo dues, and suddenly they say, eh, "We kind of lost this little lawsuit over uh, uh, the fact that um, we 
lien this guy for painting the trim the wrong size, right. and he won in court. So he's won a four or six million dollars judgment against the 20 of us in this condo. So we're going to hit you with a $50,000 special assessment, which you have to have by the end of this month. And if you don't have it, we'll lien your house for non-payment of uh, judgment. And that people have no idea when they go into a neighborhood, buy a house there that has an they HOA. They have this much knowledge. They have nothing. The right. realtor says, sign this. Right. What's that? It's 120 pages. Uh, can I read it first? Well, it's just to keep, uh, keep, uh, the neighborhood, keep the neighbor right. from building a house, uh, an right. extra room in his house with, without permission. And you think, oh, okay. You go ahead and sign it. You're never given a chance to read the uh, covenants, controls, and restrictions. And, and in Colorado, mm -hmm. thanks to an anti-growth ordinance that was passed through the legislature, right. there are no, uh, almost no new developments that are being built that don't have an HOA. They need to have some sort of controlling authority, right. special district, in order to get permission to build homes. Right. So I'm, to I, build homes to build. With, in, with more density. Right. That's the, the plum for the developer to push the homeowners into uh, uh, buying into the property. Right. And so while well, I, I have a house that is old enough that it's not in an HOA, mm -hmm. I can do what I want with my house. Mm -hmm. you know, these HOAs that tell you what type of drapes you need to have because people can see them or how high your kid's swing can be, it can't be any higher than the or fence. Or if you can have a swing. If your kids can have a swing. Right. You have to go, let me see if I got this. Mm -hmm. You might live in a neighborhood with hundreds and hundreds of people, but if three of them, two out of three of them say, no, no swing in your backyard for mm -hmm. your little kid, that's, that's it. That's doable, Are and it's done all the time. You make some pretty amazing claims here. You, you, you tell us that you can be evicted from your home if you're black, if you're gay, if, if you're handicapped, if you're a single mom. I mean, how, how would that even be legal? How would that be possible? The modern HOA movement was born in a very interesting year in American history, 1964, two or three months after the Civil Rights Act. Restrictive covenants um, blanketed America, restrictive covenants saying you're not, you're not allowed to sell to... You're not, you're not one of us, we don't want you there. Right. No Jews, no Orientals, no people of the Mongoloid race, no blacks, um, no, you know, whatever, no Protestants even in some areas. But those restrictive covenants have been on the, have been on your deed probably for the past 200 years, if you go back and look at the history. Um, there were a couple of court decisions that um, did away with those, uh, with the power of those restrictive covenants. So the builders got together with the Urban Land Institute and they said, we gotta do something to be able to uh, protect our property. So from, protect our property from, from those, those people. Those people. So, and they created the Homeowners Association, the modern movement, privately incorporating neighborhoods as country clubs. Because if you're, if you're in a private club, mm -hmm. those rules from uh, civil rights laws don't apply. Exactly. Because this, is, it's not a, this is not a public place. This is a private institution. This is a right. private club. We can run how we want to run our, right. our organization. Right. It was believed that blacks weren't interested in playing golf or tennis. And the most amazing change in homeowners associations nationally was when Tiger Woods won that uh, Jerry Pate uh, collegiate golf tournament. PGA suddenly had to start looking around and saying and, and asking themselves, which clubs don't discriminate against blacks? And uh, it was some real difficult years, but Tiger Woods doesn't even know what he did for this country in terms of uh, getting rid of a lot of the garbage that, uh, that no, was going But those on. things are still there. What, what's That's amazing, so let me, let me see if I get this. Mm -hmm. we, we pass a civil rights law to, to get rid of those type of right. abuses. Um, uh, people find a way to keep undesirables mm -hmm. out and then in the late 1990s, early 2000s, Colorado passes a law saying you must put in that mechanism by mm -hmm. which you can discriminate against people. Mm -hmm. And people love it because I don't want my neighbor to paint his house pink. I, I, that would, I would find that offensive. You know, you drive through the country club uh, area in Denver, you don't see any pink houses, but that's not a, uh, a homeowners association there. Really? Yeah. Um, you don't see cars up on blocks. Those are always the, 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 the fear. The fear. The fear. Factors I don't want they throw at you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want. I don't want. No a, cars on blocks. You no don't want people cars on, yeah. on front yards, uh, mm -hmm. on, on cinder blocks. People working on. No. No. And so we've got things that say, that say your car has to be in your dr in your parking spot or in your garage. In the garage. But it goes further. Give me some. Uh, of the, give me some of the best ones. Okay. Best. Uh, another good one is a five hundred dollar fine if you leave your garage door open for more than ten minutes. That happens all over the country. 
Um, wait, wait, wait. So I'm working on my car right. in my garage, right. or I'm cleaning out my garage, right. and it's open for more than 10 minutes. Yeah, you get hit with a fine. If you get uppity about the fine, then you get a lien filed against your home. You say, wait a minute, uh, can we talk to the neighbors about this? And I know I know people who have been put into bankruptcy because of complaints and fines from the HOA. Thousands and thousands of people. And yes. you don't realize that the house, this is my house, this is my castle, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden there's a lien on it mm -hmm. because the homeowners association didn't didn't like what you did. What if it's a vacation home? You're a snowbird. Right. Uh, they don't mail you the lien. The lien's filed against your empty house. You get back, you discover not only uh, has this happened, the house has been taken and sold at auction before you even knew anything was happening. Wait, Just time, happened. time out, time out. Mm -hmm. You're telling me that a home can be taken and auctioned off yes. in order to pay for these liens without even a homeowner knowing it's happening. Yes, a famous case happened to a uh, uh, Captain Clower, an army captain who was serving overseas in uh, um, Afghanistan or Iraq, I forget which one. Um, his wife living in a house thought the mail that uh, uh, she was receiving was junk mail that was put aside, she didn't open it. He got back to the United States and his house was gone. His wife had lost it, it had been sold at auction. Now you can't file that kind of action against somebody serving active duty overseas, right? Isn't that federal law? It is. Yet this homeowners association still did it. Only a couple minutes left. Tell me, people before they move into a home, what should they check for? And give me some advice for people who are in these situations because they're everywhere. They're, yeah, they, they are. Uh, read the book, educate yourself. Um, go to my website, neighborsatwar.com. We've got nearly half a million people on this website already. Um, a lot of concerned people across the country are saying, uh, I gotta learn what's going on here. Um, d discover for yourself the um, uh, the organized crime indictments against homeowners associations up and down the valley in Las Vegas. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. One more time on that one? Okay. There's a massive federal investigation that has led to the indictment of 40 people. Lawyers, uh, businessmen, uh, a prominent TV uh, reporter who was also a realtor, prominent realty firms, 40 federal indictments for racketeering over fixing of uh, board elections in homeowners associations and diverting insurance money into the private pockets of these 40 people. Classic mafioso organized crime. So basically, it is a private organization that has governmental authority. Yes. And that this, you don't have the due process that is guaranteed you exactly. when you're dealing with the government. Exactly. So if the government tried to do any of the things that these homeowners associations were doing, the ACLU would be there to, to help us out. You know, conservatives and libertarians have got to pay attention to this issue because, yeah, the ACLU is walking in here and saying, oh, we've got some good issues. But these are constitutional issues, Remarkable. and we better all, all right. start paying attention. Website, neighborsatwar.com, the book at Amazon. Hey, thank you so much, Ward. You bet, John. Thank you. Tell a friend. We'll see you next week.